joining us tonight for my mom's uh, novena prayers. This is the eighth night and tomorrow will be our last day. Um, we will be starting tonight with a tribute from Lola Daisy's grandson. He is from Hague, from the Netherlands, and he's joining us tonight. I'll let him introduce himself to you. Um, Sandro, he's here tonight, and we're so happy to see you, Sandro. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Sandro. Um, Lolo Desi was uh, there for me from the beginning of my life, and um, I, um, I've always seen her as my uh, grandma. Um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to share uh, a letter that some of you already have read. Um, it's just my thoughts on everything. Um, so I'll just start. Um, uh, dear loving family, my mom and I are so devastated by the horrible news and it just makes it pretty much the worst beginning of the new year. First of all, thank you so much for letting us know about the situation and updating us throughout the weeks. It may not seem much to you, but to me, it means everything. Um, when my father passed away in 2014, we found out two weeks after his passing when his funeral already happened. It was always my, literally my worst nightmare that I wouldn't be able to attend his funeral and that came true. Um, I know it may uh, be a selfish, a selfish thought, but for me, the mourning process feels much better by being included, even though it seems uh, unlikely we will be able to travel to Los Angeles uh, to go to any uh, funeral service due to COVID restric restrictions. Uh, therefore, it does help in a sense that it, that it was and um, that I was and am with you in uh, all the prayers uh, when this started now too, or I think it's now already three, four weeks ago. Um, when Lola Daisy was in the Netherlands for my graduation in 2018, we exchanged books. I'm not sure what was mine about, but something along the lines of the current state of the world or politics, something around that, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, we like to discuss that always. Um, Olo gave, uh, my book gave interesting facts about this or that. It did not give, uh, it did not give any life lessons. Uh, the book she gave me uh, was The Prophet by uh, Khalil uh, Gibran. Um, her favorite, Patrick favorite, uh, Patrick's favorite, my, uh, my favorite now also. Um, uh, as maybe a lot of you guys know, uh, it tries just to enlighten the readers uh, about life. Um, and so when I was writing this letter and just thinking about how terrible the loss was, uh, I just quickly turned to this, um, yeah, thoughtful book that Lola Daisy gave me. Um, so when I was thinking about her, uh, the loss of Lola Daisy, uh, it just helped me a, a lot to focus on positive aspects and memories. Uh, for example, I'm just very happy in a way that uh, her passing happened relatively fast. Um, I just could not stand really the fact that she was alone without any family or friends by her side. Um, and even though I had only limited moments uh, with Lola Daisy, because we just could only visit always uh, a few uh, a few weeks at a time, and or she could visit us only a few weeks at a time uh, with vacations and everything, it was always very clear to me that she just poured her heart and soul and everyone around her, and that they just always kept her strong. Um, and as the chapter. Uh, of uh, the prophet uh, reads the chapter on giving. Uh, it says, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself when you truly give. Then it goes on with, there are those who give with joy and joy is their reward. Uh, these are the believers in life and the bounty of life and their coffers never empty. Um, 
Lola Daisy deserved the people that she loved and the people that loved her by her side. To me, what uh, that is what COVID truly took from her. And in return, it, it just gives me so much heartache. Um, it's just that that's the only thing that makes me happy then because she didn't have to have to suffer too long. Um, and yeah, I just, we, I, I think we all, all know she's now in a truly a, pl a, a place she can truly rest. And um, I don't know, it just, that just makes me a lot more, yeah, happy, but maybe more um, um, uh, just at ease with uh, the whole situation. Um, even though she deserved a, a much more dignified passing, uh, she lived an amazing life and did everything she wanted to do with her life. She truly lived every day to do good for others and was guided wholeheartedly by her belief in God. Um, she has spread her love and warmth to so many people, and I think it's safe to say she has touched everyone around her. Um, therefore, she leaves us so, uh, so many of us with memories of her love, warmth, wisdom, and her trust in faith. Um, that is what she leaves behind, and that is her uh, that legacy is the thing that already is keeping me sane throughout this horrible loss. Um, it also motivates me to do more. She traveled the world, studied every facet of librarianship, and cared for all the children she could care for. Um, therefore, when thinking of her death, I think of her life. She already found the uh, meaning of death in the meaning of life. Um, if there is one lesson she has taught me, this is the one and that will continue to motivate me. Um, Lola Daisy will always be with me. Uh, she will always be my grandmother that came not from blood, but from just pure love. Uh, one that filled the void dearly needed by me who's, uh, when my uh, mom's mom, my, my grandma passed away. Um, when she, uh, when I was only 11, sorry, 11, 11 months, um, and uh, one that now leaves an aching pain in my heart, but not an emptiness. Even though I did not have much time with her besides our short vacations, um, her life and her presence in my life meant the world to me and uh, will stay with me forever. My mom and I are eternally grateful for her and the friendship and family she has brought us. I'm so happy to have met, her, uh, met you all uh, and so uh, happy to call you guys my family. Even though it always takes a little bit of explaining uh, to, to others to uh, what you guys are to me, actually, uh, to me, you guys are just simply family. Um, this, the memory of her love, the warmth, uh, her lessons about life are the things she filled in, uh, into the void of that little boy uh, when I was young and now uh, until now. And now will always be with me as a man. Um, I want to end this letter by a few wor uh, last words from the prophet. Uh, the chapter about joy and sorrow reads, When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see th that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. No true words have been spoken on a day like today. Dear Lola Daisy, thank you for having thank you for having you and your love in all of our lives. Uh, for you uh, were and still are in our memories the most wonderful delight. Um, well, to everybody, <laughs> I hope you guys are um, kind of coping with Lola Daisy's passing. Um, I know it is very hard on me. Um, but like I said, the, yeah, the happy thoughts, the good life she lived, just, yeah, makes it somewhat better uh, for me. I also just wanted to share the last thing I was thinking about today um, is that um, Lola Daisy really uh, taught how to love by showing or just just doing the loving. She didn't really need to teach us. She didn't say how to, she just did. Um, and uh, I don't know, I think that's the biggest lesson I will take away from her life. It's just, just be kind and love, just love. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. 
much, Sandro. Um, thank you, Sandro. I know it's very early there. It's like uh, three thirty in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah. We really appreciate that you came in and shared your letter to us, which was very touching and moving for everyone. Um, are you staying, Sandro? Or? Oh uh, yeah, I'm staying for a little bit. Oh, okay. Because uh, the yeah. next um, tribute we're doing is your mom's tribute. Okay. So I just cool. would like to say something to Sandro. Hi, Sandro. I am Tita Bim. I am Hi, the young sister of Tita Daisy. We've never met, but from yes, her no. stories of you, it seems like I've known you all your life. <laughs> Even before you were giving birth, we will do uh, give, your, your mom is giving birth to you. <laughs> I know already because I even said, why are you going there? She's, she's giving birth to someone who is not even your grandchild. <laughs> but Ate Daisy said, Anita was first my friend before she became my daughter-in-law. See yeah. how you really meant to your Lola Daisy. And each time she visits, she delights in telling, her, in telling us how you've developed into the person, into the beautiful person that you are now. She really loves you, loves you very much and appreciates you. That's why when my son was making a video for her 86th birthday, we had a Zoom, Zoom also celebration because we couldn't meet together. I told my son, there should be a picture of Sandra and Daisy there. You shouldn't miss that. So you oh, are you. in our family album. All right, you are family, Sandra. We love you. Thank you very much. That means so much, really. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do um, Anita's letters and I'm gonna say something first before Nicole will read the letter to you. Mommy worked at the University of the Philippines first as a librarian and then a university professor at the Asian Labor Education Center, now School of Labor and Industrial Relations. She was sent on three government scholarships, the first one in the East Coast in the field of librarianship and the other two in the field of labor relations. Whenever, wherever she was sent, she excelled and was an asset in the fields of study. So much so that she was offered a job in the East Coast, which she respectfully declined saying that she had to go back to serve her country, share what she had learned and experienced. Sayang, amoy America na sana ako noon. Her secondary scholarship, she was sent to the Netherlands or Holland in the mid 70s. There, she met lifelong friends, one of whom became her daughter-in-law. Her name is Anita Vanderhulst. Anita mentioned that she was planning a trip to the Philippines. And my mom, very hospitable, invited her to stay at our home in Mahusay. My brother, Ellery, began a long distance relationship with her. She would spend almost every Christmas with us until Ellery immigrated to Holland in the mid 80s. After 15 years together, Ellery and Anita decided to separate. When Anita's parents were very ill, Anita decided to have a child, Sandro. Titaline, mom's younger sister, as she said, found out mom was planning a trip and asked her, why she was going there when the child Anita was giving birth to was not her grandchild. For ma uh, my mom said she was my friend first before she was my daughter. For mom, friendships are golden. Who knows, she might have coined BFF. Mommy flew to Holland to help Anita in her first two weeks of motherhood. Mommy also had an opportunity to go to Sydney, Australia in the early 80s for her third scholarship. This letter is from Anita. Nicole will read it. 
Dear Daisy, we met more than 40 years ago in the Institute of Social Studies on a Dutch evening. We danced a polonaise. I felt two hands on my shoulders. And when I looked around, there you were. You did not let go of me. How a split second can influence the rest of your life. You are timeless, your grace, typical walk, your stubbornness. Distance, age, culture, circumstances, opinions have never mattered between us. We just are. Like Sandra writes, you shared your family with us. Is there a bigger gift? I do not think so. You left your mark on all of us. You left in the week Sandro is turning 21. Here in La Gomorra, Gomera, I looked over the ocean and think of you and all our loved ones, some of who left far too early. It moves me, it is there, but I cannot reach it. It is eternity. Everything I feel, I cannot put in words. I do not have to, because you know. My last flowers to you, love, Anita. She is vacationing in La Gomera and I've consistently updated her and Sandro of mom's situation as it developed. Although not practicing any religion, she was compelled to go every day to the chapel and offer prayers. She bought these flowers for the chapel after she learned of mom's passing but because of COVID, could not leave them inside. Okay, sorry. You don't hear me. Yes, um, I'm. I'm going to share the video I made um, for my mom. Ay, tapos yung pag-mix ko yung oil na lang. Kasi matigas. Tonight, you'll watch a video I made for mommy. My daughter, Nicole, sang the, ba the background music and she doesn't speak Tagalog. Some of the pictures came from albums she left with me many years ago. It was going to be our project teach her to scan the pictures and put it in a disc. The albums went back and forth to Tita Irene's house and here in San Diego. Finally, last year, I decided it to be my project and gave her a digital photo frame as a birthday gift. Thankful and grateful to God, bless for gifting me you. Can you do it? Oh 
Beautiful, Janet. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's for mommy. Yes. Nicole, very, very nice. And Jen, you did very well. And Sandro, are you still there? Did Irene hear? Yeah. Hi, teacher Irene. Hello. Monique is saying hello to you. She misses <laughs> you. <laughs> is she still salty? <laughs> no, she's getting old like me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Sandro when you were I think that you were you were age what 14 or 8 
-hmm. You did not want to go upstairs to sleep with your mom. You wanted to stay downstairs in the living room with your Lola Daisy. Mm -hmm. Every night you were with her. And every time you move, Monique will be barking. So you hated <laughs> Monique. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're fine here. Uh, hang in there. Lola Daisy would like for you to take care of yourself. Okay? Yes, of course. She, right. she would. Uh, okay. I remember when, when Sandra first visited us, um, he, was, he didn't speak English at that time. He was very small. And the first words I found, I heard from him was, I'm hungry. So <laughs> I said, oh, God. <laughs> that was really good memories of you wanting to have breakfast at, uh, when your mom was still uh, asleep. And you would go down and say, I'm hungry. So, yeah. <laughs> Probably and he bacon. likes bacon. He, he, yeah, <laughs> his probably mom bacon. bacon. I, I, did, I did not know what he was wanting. And he, <laughs> and he, she had to go upstairs. Tell your mom to write bacon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, take care. Um, it's going to be an open mic. So if anyone wants to share. And Sandro, feel free to go anytime because I know you need to sleep. No worries, no, no, that's good. He's, he's, he goes to school there, and um, I'm worried that he's gonna, he's not gonna get his sleep today. It's that's fine. I can sleep out or sleep in. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I maybe I, I had some pictures still from oh, some okay. pictures. Of, can you share it then? Yes, I have a lot of tabs open, so I just have to. Go. All right, here. Thank you. Um, so here are some of the pictures. Some of them were, were already shown. Oh, we don't have I that think one. my first visit yeah. to um, uh, to the US or to the States. Um, I think I was about one um, or something, one, one or two. Um, yeah, so this is a really cute photo. Jeremy is very cute also and Nicole too. <laughs> Um, I think this is the same visit. I'm pretty sure, actually. Um, with Tita Joy also, and my mom. Um, um, yeah, same thing. Then with Uncle Richard and Tita Lorna. Us three. Me and Lola Daisy. Um, and this was my last visit. Um, I had a gap year, and I went to uh, travel... Uh, uh, around Southeast Asia for um, four months, and then I ended in uh, in California. Um, I'm so happy I uh, chose to uh, come to California because um, to me it really was um, some sort of an like for me it did uh, make it um, not final, but it just it made sure it was like our story of my my and Lola Daisy's it just kind of was complete um I am uh, I'm very happy about that um, this was also then she ate it when I took pictures uh, when she was just so sleepy <laughs> or so looking sleepy uh and uh, she she would be saying like your hair is a mess and she would just really play down or play herself down I do I, I think when I was there in 2000 maybe 17, um, I started saying to her, oh, Lola Daisy, my love, my life, something around that kind of thing. And she would always laugh. Um, and also from when I came in, uh, I think, so my last time uh, that I came and when she was with uh, us in, for my graduation, um, she always would hate that I happen to have a beard now. She, she, she I would think she, uh, I would need to keep young and stay pretty <laughs> and not look uh, so old as soon as I, uh, I like, uh, like not be uh, so soon old. Um, this is my mom and a little lady, they say, I think in 2017. Um, same thing for uh, my mom and her uh, little Daisy. Um, us again. And, us. and this was when she was in um, uh, Holland for my graduation uh, with my uncle. 
um yeah just really really wonderful times i just um every time i would be with her the those moments uh, or those vacations i always just i i literally held on to her <laughs> i would literally just keep her walk with her just her slow pace <laughs> even though it's like even though she didn't want and uh, want that necessarily i just those are the moments i just i knew i had to um um keep in mind that it might be the last time or it like uh, the their moments the moments were just so few that i just really cherished them always um i'm so happy i did that so those are the pictures Oh, that was sweet, nice. Sandro. We didn't expect that. Thank you. Yeah. Those pictures are so precious. Thank you for sharing. Um, do we have any other people who'd like to share? I think Ellery is sharing. Mm. See, Mama is a big fan of uh, State University. She's her uh, elementary classmates. And, um, High school classmates, Stephen Noli, Magakasama Sina, when they always had their reunion. Stephen Noel Hati, who still comes over from, from Germany, and Frankie also, you know, they still have contact. Uh, eventually, um, UPLM 71 and UPI 75, my batch, uh, formed the uh, LA group. They say we're 17 people here from elementary and high school. And mom uh, would host uh, the Barcada sa bahay. Now, there is one particular uh, person that uh, from day one, they were almost like meant to have met and bonded together. You saw that they were uh, as one with their <laughs> mental set, yeah, with their mental set and the way they they viewed life. And the elements they're both humble, they were both intellectuals, they were they they both love reading books and things. So I'd like to call on Renato. Gonzalez, because Nato is the, uh, the special one that mom bestowed upon him, yung, yung talagang love. Almost, almost like a son. I could see that. So I know that Renato has some thoughts, beautiful thoughts for mom, kasi uh, although si Mama na hihirapan mag-read ng text message, and he's still run out of right now. So I, I want to call on him and say a few words to Nato sa pagkakaibigan niya ni Mama, you know, the, the way your friendship involved with Mom. Kasi it, it, it really, I mean, it was really beautiful, Renato. Right? Okay. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, siguro mas uh, I mean, dahil ko pa kayo sa daming beses nakita si Tita Daisy for seven years. Ah, uh, kahit si I mean, there there wouldn't uh, be a week that passed na hindi hindi ako pumupunta kasi sa bahay ni Ellery and. Uh, uh, she treated me like Ellery. <laughs> Parang siguro, you know, Tita Daisy is uh, uh, one word, service. So, nung una pa lang kami nasa LA na mag-asawa, that was 2013, uh, she would invite us to eat every Sunday sa Paseo. Every Sunday. So, kung baga, if you count it, I would, we would see her 
uh, probably 45 times in a year. That's the minimum. Ako, I would see her maybe in the last couple of years, maybe less than a hundred times a year. And palagi ako pinauwi ang pagkain. If ever I, if ever I bring anything like uh, bumili ako ng kamatis o ng vegetables, hindi pwedeng hindi hahanap siya ng kapalit. <laughs> so, isang best sabi ko, kita ano ba ito, gantihan. <laughs> so, palaging, hindi ako alis ng bahay nila, Ella, rin ang walang dala. Kahit biskwit, kahit isang pirato. And, of course, the famous Coke. Uh, for the last probably six months o one year, uh, si Ellery ang taya ang laging pinabibili but I would always have a uh, may, may party na ako dun sa bibiling ko ng Ellery. Lagi isa o dalawang dosena. But the thing I loved most was uh, nung sinimulan ko magtanim ng halaman ng succulents sa apartment nila Ellery. I think she loved it. So, for the past three years, basta tanim ako ng tanim ng sunflower. She, she loves it. So, in, hindi ako nagmimintis taon-taon magtanim ng sunflower. Pinupuno ko yun ng sunflower. Kasi ang audience ko, si Tita Daisy, makita ko nang siyang mamitik. Masaya na ako doon sa ginagawa akong paghahalaman. So, I mean, my parents are both dead pat matagal na. So, uh, saka marami akong auntie rito sa California pero iba eh, hindi kami malalapit eh kahit uh, kapatid ng father ko yung mga auntie ko so ang talagang auntie ko si Tita Daisy <laughs> saka although I'm already 64 pag uh, nasa harap niya ako tingin ko bata ako <laughs> Tasyan, anay, siya, auntie. <laughs> so, parang, kumbaga, naalala ko yung mga panahon na tuwan-tuwa akong pumupunta sa mga auntie ko. So, parang may auntie rin ako na tunay na kamag-anak. <laughs> Dito na yun. So, uh, siyempre, devastated din ako ng mawala. I mean, tin, naunang tinuro niya kam, mag-asawang kamag-anak. Mm, uh, yun nga. To her, everything was service including para sa aming mag-asawa. Uh, parang ad, ang tingin namin adopted children kami na <laughs> the days. <laughs> so there, uh, malaking kawalan para sa uh, aming mag-asawa rin niya pagkawalan ni Tita Daisy. Dahil, kumbaga, besides our daughter who's in Virginia, siya na yung pinaka, tinuturing na yung pinaka malapit na kamag-anak. Sabi nga nung daughter ko eh, kung sino magturing sa akin na pamilya, siya yung pamilya ko. So, Tita Daisy was our family. She was our aunt. Thank you. <laughs> you will have both. Yeah. Uh, Natoy and Marcia, thank you so much for that. Yung sunflower gardens and succulents have been uh, a real joy to my mom. She even said to bring some succulents with me to my own home. She was so happy that she found somebody who loved gardening like she did. Thank you, Sandro. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Ellery and Miriam. Thank you, Bingo. Thank you, everybody. Si, uh, oh, si Mama. Nung bata kami sa mahusay. Uh, that's uh, my, you know, uh, growing things as, as uh, teenagers and, and all of that. We had our share. We had our share of those, those things, you know. Was not uh, a bed of roses, but uh, we were able to uh, get on it with the 
with positivity and hopefully uh, as a family, you know. Ang karating sinasabi ni Mama is number one. Mahusay is a very uh, is a very blessed house because almost all of the boarders who live there eventually left the Philippines for greener pastures. And most of the boarders who uh, studied there and stayed with us also <clears throat> graduated with their uh, with their diplomas on on their different courses. So one time, pag may away kami ni Mama, sabi niya sa akin, "Oh, hey, lumayas ka na." So sabi ko naman kay Mama, hindi ako lalaya. Bakit hindi ka lalaya? Kasi pag lumayas ako, ma, magugutom ako. Pag nagutom ako, babalik ako dito. Pag bumalik ako dito, mapapahiya ako sa iyo. <laughs> anyway, it came to the point that we we got our visas for the US and uh, that's when I told my mom. Sabi ko, ma, it's around 80, uh, that was about 82 or 83 that some of the market yata on one the states and uh, oh, ma, alalayas na ako yan. Hindi na muna ako babalik ng matagal. Matagal, hindi ako babalik. Para, para maging malaki na. And I did. You know, I mean, like my mom, uh, as adventurous as she was, I I went in Holland. Nobody was there for me. They didn't speak English. I had, I had uh, my partner Anita. But I did, and then I did. I was back and forth. Richard was telling me, so, so what if you don't know? I ain't gonna die for a minute. You know, I can almost come back. And I also did. But I became a, a, a Dutch citizen. While I was there, and I, I spoke <laughs> Dutch, so I come back to the states and get my petition. At tama talaga si mami, makikinig ka sa akin parate. Pag nagsalita na si mami ng ganon, tiklop na ako. Talagang makikinig ako sa kanya, because that's really the mark of a that's wisdom over there. So you, you don't counter that. So sabi niya pag petition kita, there is a back door. So you do that. I got it. And then here we are. And uh, I just wanted to say talaga na when mom lived with us 2014, we were happy kami kasi you, we had a back house. Although we had Danan, we didn't have any neighbors. And na, Renato, as dry as the garden was, he put in his life force on it so that admirably talagang naging garden yun na tontuwa si mama. In fact, there's a, there's a picture of mom with a, with a garden, okay. with a sunflower. And she was so proud of uh, Renato's plants and succulents. And uh, yun nga, tama yung sabi yun, meron na nga raw siyang ka-intest na kasama. Now, na quite recently, inutusan ako ni Mama bumili, believe it or not, ng 16 pieces of Coke, yung 12, uh, 12, uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 in a box. Iintayin ko yun mag, uh, mag, mag, maging 249 for four, and I'd buy 16. And we did, I did that for her for twice. Kasi sabi niya, alam mo, iho, Ngayong magki-Christmas, ang ibibigay na lang natin yung po because <laughs> sabi niya, just like me, our coke addicts, and you know that when you give them coke, they will surely drink it. <laughs> oh, hindi, para yun ang regalo ni mami sa, sa mga kaibigan niya. Sabi ko, tama ka doon nga, ano ba? <laughs> Bigyan natin ng coke yung mga kaibigan mo. Oh. They will be very happy. So that that's that's how mom just the kind acts. 
of building simple pero pero and um, i'm just so uh, you know like i said man it's really just the small things that get to you but uh, you know by god's grace we uh, the grief show pass and all of this show pass mom was uh, there for us with my group not just on the gigs but i made sure that every year the going birthday niya, whether ayo niya or hindi talagang nagpapagigil ko para sa kanya and fortunately enough sina bingo and dengue were recipients of that invitation when the whole family of dame uh drove from frisco to noy pits <coughs> now ang maganda kay mami is hindi lang siya doon sa gig. Pag may awards kami, which we garnered a lot, in fact, uh, through the years, sabi, sabi ko naman sa kanya, ma, eh, ano ba, eh, hindi naman kwarta pag-usapan natin dito eh. It's about recognition and the values of the State University, which is honor and excellence and compassion in all fields. So those things you cannot pay. So it's the same perspective when mom also applies that to other people. Sa kanya, ang kagandahan ng loob ng isang tao, iba-ibang facets. Kung hindi makakapagbigay ng pera or anything like that for a contribution, she sees the goodness of the contribution in the small things that that person does. From taking <clears throat> pictures na libre or just by their own volition or just probably helping in serving food or just probably helping in welcoming the guests. Now, not all people are equal in terms of assets. Pero sa kanya, yung kagandahan ng loob ng tao into different small things of acts of kindness na nakakatulong sa sitwasyon, that for her, that she has an eye as she has a, an eye of detail for this thing and she she taught me what it, to appreciate them so madami ang la group yata siguro na pupunta sa living ni mama and fortunately kitang kita ko yung galak ni mama tuwing kinakanta namin yung you make me feel brand new by the stylistics the last time we did that, handun pa yung mga taga, taga Glendale Federal Credit Union sa Noy Pits sa uh, uh, downtown Los Angeles. And that was his number seven. And mom was there too. And Joy was there too. Oh, yung friends ni mama handun. Yung taga Credit Union. So we'll do that for her because uh, we're ready for that and uh, logistics are being prepared. I just want to say that she, uh, you know, she made us all proud. She, uh, she really, she really pulled it out, you know, pulled out the best of us because she was the best mom in the world. That's it, man. That's it. Hello, everybody. My name is Amy, and a lot of people, my friends anyway, call me Mac. I am one of the people who had the privilege of staying at 43 Mahusai years ago. I'm one of the boarders. And I just want to say that I am very sad about Tita Daisy's passing. Uh, she was like a mother to all of us. At yung sabi nga ni Ellery, it is just true. Uh, she treated all of us like children and we tried to be good children to her. So um, it's been many years, a lot of things have happened in between our lives. And 
it is just um, great that we found each other here again in California. And thank you, Janet, for reaching out to me and reminding me of a good person that your mom was. Um, if there's one word that I could uh, describe your mom, grace. She had grace. And uh, now that I'm older and maybe a little wiser, once in a blue moon, somebody would give me a compliment and say, how did you get to be nice or whatever? And I say, I was lucky because I have good role models. And certainly, Hattie Daisy was one of those people that I admire. And even if I'm not around her all the time, um, I think of her with great fondness and inspiration. So thank you for letting me be a part of the life at Mahusai. And, you know, the life that you guys are sharing about her. And it reminds me that um, there are a lot of good people, great people, and she is certainly one of them. So thank you. She is. Thank you, Meg, for that. Um, yeah, first, um, Meg lived with us in Mahusai. And um, yeah, last night, I just looked at my, my phone and I saw her there. Her name was there. We haven't seen each other for years. And I said, let me try if this is still her phone. And I just sent a short message. Is this Meg's phone? This is Janet. And she responded right away. So um, it was, I think, mom's grace that I was able to uh, talk to you again and, and you reaching out to us. Thank you. You, you, you Esper, Pet, um, and Natalie, Natalie, all four of you. Yeah, we're mom's angels. So uh, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't um, go that far. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did quote unquote angels. <laughs> um, Nick, Pat, and Esther and Natalie were very, very close to, to my sister, DeJoy. And yeah, um, they would smoke, <laughs> they would drink. Those were the times, but they were inside the house. So mom allowed it. So it was good. Everything was good. We played Scrabble. <laughs> We're about in California. You live? I, I live in San Diego, probably about two miles away from Jan. Wow. Wow. Okay. How's your brother Raul? How is Raul he? is good. Uh, there's another uh, tribute that I would like for your Lolo. Oh. You know, he was he stayed with uh, Mr. Bobby's for the longest time, and that's how I got to your household. Mm -mm. The Raul is doing fine. He's uh, actually staying with me. Uh, that's good, man. That's good. You guys, uh, you guys, uh, mind if I get your number? So when, when oh yeah, I will day, definitely. Yeah, you know, when please. everything normalizes, I'm gonna invite you when we get here. And on. yeah, and Esper is also in San Diego, and she lives in Escondido. She's about 20 minutes drive from where Janet and I. Now, I've had people coming all the way from Vegas and. Uh, and the East Coast, yeah, to, to watch. So, anyway, um, back to yung LA group natin, Gen C Chow in Chowsty. Oh, yeah. uh, chose a poem for mom. Okay, I want to read it right now because uh, Chow, um, also nini nurture ni mommy si Chow kasi when nagpupunta si Chow sa bahay, na uh, one of the adopted din yan eh. Uh, both her parents are very, uh, very sick and they get hospitalized a lot. And Chow is the one who's the, the rock of it all. Yung mga nag-asawa yung tao eh. Pero siya ang tumutulong sa mama at papa niya. 
And here's her poem that I'd like to read. Kasi talaga raw hindi niya mababasa baka raw siya umagulgol. She chose three poems. I, I chose this one. My mom kept a garden. My mother kept a garden. A garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life start. She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me to, to dream. Fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and rains came, she protected me enough, but not too much. She knew I'd need to stand up strong and tough. Her constant good example always taught me right from wrong. Markers for my pathway to last my whole life long. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. And I hope today she feels the love reflected back from me. Reach out. Uh, that's beautiful. Uh, please think. Uh, is Chow with us here, or oh, she? Yeah. I hope. Oh, yeah. thank you, Chow. Uh, yeah, the LA group mom loved each and every one of them. You can see the happiness in her face when we go to LA and one of the LA, um, Ellery's friends are there and she feels so comfortable with all of them that feel like part part of the, the family. So thank you, Chow, Marsha, Nato. Thank you for loving mommy and for letting her be part of your life because um, you, you meant a lot to her. Um, does anyone else want to pay tribute to mommy? Um, I just wanted to add um, Sandro. Um, I'm Tita Bingo from San Francisco. <laughs> I'm a cousin of Ate Jen and Kuya Ellery and Ate Joy. Um, one of the, you know, Tita Daisy and I talk on the phone frequently. And I just wanted to let you know that what that one of our conversations of her really happy and joyful spaces that she shared with me was her vacation at your at your home. And how much in those, you know, she said she actually just stayed home at your home and didn't really care to go anywhere else. And she was quite happy just being at home with both of you. And how she marveled on the trees that she would watch from the window and how it changes because the light, the view changes because of the light from daytime from sunrise to sunset and how much she marveled at that and and you know Tita Daisy had an amazing way of enjoying the simple things in life and made beautiful moments um, with each of us by just being really present. It's not about what uh, what she can get next or what she where she can go next, what she can do next, but just what's here right now in the moment. That was such a gift. And I'm always going to be grateful for that. And it was a delight to, to hear her share her stories of her joy of just being with you and Anita. So I know she made, you know, that you made her very happy. 
Thank you so much. That was really sweet of sharing. Uh, really sweet of you of sharing. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, what word you're saying is so true. She really um, just could, she, her view on life was so simple yet so meaningful and you know I, I, like i said i think i i think she's truly the um the best person i've ever known as in true um she's truly good in every sense of the way if I, a sense of the word truly good um and i don't know where it comes from um but just yeah true yeah what you're saying is so true and yeah sorry <laughs> um do we have anyone else who would like to share well i just want to say <laughs> address fall because i remember when uh, we 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 spent our summer time going to Disneyland and staying with Tita. And Tita is the one who likes to host every time. And she likes to make you feel really, really comfortable. So I just realized that um, Paul was the one who always get to sacrifice his space. I remember when Paul was staying on the outside, the house, the little room outside of the house, you would stay there and Paul would be kicked out. And then when Paul finally moved into the master bedroom, the same thing would happen. <laughs> Paul would always get kicked out so we can stay in the master bedroom. So <laughs> I just realized that Paul, you're always getting kicked out when wherever we stay at your house. So I just wanna say thank you, Paul. Um, I'm sure Tita Daisy is so proud of you for, for willing to share your space when there's a visitor coming by and staying at your house. So thank you, Paul. So that's yeah. all. Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to share? Um, on that note, on the same note, I really want to uh, say thank you to uh, Ellery and Miriam. Um, you have also been very, very uh, hospi uh, hospitable to me. I mean, I, I very understand it. It's not the most normal situation um, having uh, the son of your uh, ex-wife or the uh, your husband's ex-wife son over, um, but you did that so love lovingly and that's yeah i i i just find that so i, I always remember remembered that um and uh, yeah just you just treated me just as anyone would or just any uh other person also just your random cooking Maryam. i just you were so sweet just like a normal aunt oh, no, instead of just <laughs> like i said the weird situation that it other people would find it mm -hmm. so Thank you for that. Well, you're always welcome, Sandro. So you know you still you still have permission to come. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your Lola Daisy's room, she really prepared it very <laughs> nice. We're so proud when uh, when we found this uh, two bedroom bungalow because uh, near uh, Eagle Rock, you know, and uh, Mom really arranged. I was really like so impressed how mom uh, swished through the you know the the switching of houses she was even the first she beat us all in wrapping up everything that she packing. and packing her things she took time but she beat us all then and um, now her room is i would say immaculate and uh all the things that she wanted on her headboard, all the novenas, all the pictures of God and family, they're, they're just seen you know, on her headboard. And, um, you know, you're always welcome. Okay, Sandro? Thank you so much. They are waiting. 
Zeker. Zeker weten, ja. <laughs> ja. Ja, Ellery can speak Dutch. He can what? speak several languages. What, what did um, you say? Um, so he said for sure. For sure. Oh. For sure. Can you say it again? <laughs> Do we have anyone else who would like to share? <laughs> okay, I think um, we will be closing our. <laughs> Oh, there, there. Okay, I'm sorry. Jean, Jean was cut off last night, so she wrote a letter or something like that. Why don't you read it for us? I'm sure she has a copy. I'm sure I'm, I'm interested to uh, to uh, hear her thoughts. Jean, huh? Ellery, I would really love to. Kaso yung aking internet connection is unstable. Baka makat. I mean, if somebody can just read it, it's okay. Jen, you have a copy of Jean's letter? Oh, I understand. Uh, Paul, I think Paul was going to share something. Why don't you let Paul first? Okay, okay yeah, Paul. That's fine. Um, give me one second. Um, so I got a, uh, when she passed away, um, I made a post on Facebook so some students can reach out and, and share their, their feelings. Uh, I also emailed her previous work at Marshall and, and Glenda Library and um, I've been getting some responses in and I've been sharing it with some of the family. Uh, I just got a card in right now. I figured I'd share the card now and then read a few posts. Um, yeah, so the first one is the card that I just got. Um, it goes, I want to send my sincere condolences to your family of the passing of um, your grandmother, Daisy. I'm a librarian with the Glendale Library. And I work with Daisy on the re library reference desk often on the weekends. Daisy was always so cheerful and nice, and I thoroughly enjoyed working with her. Daisy was an excellent librarian, and she always welcomed sharing her knowledge with coworkers and the library patrons. I have wonderful memories of Daisy, as she was a true example of someone who shares her knowledge and gifts generously and cheer cheerfully. I hope you and your family are comforted by great memories of time spent with her. Sincerely, Carol. Um, let's see, give me one second, let me just load the... And then on the students that posted, um, let's see. I'm truly sorry for your loss. I never forgot and still cherish memories with her. I was her helper for a few summers in between tracks. She was an incredible human being. And I'll never forget her patience, words of wisdom, and most of all kindness. She really nurtured my love of books and shaped, helped shape the person I am today. Uh, former student, rips need me. Another student, uh, it's been over 20 years and I will never forget her face. Wow. She brought so much, uh, so much joy to all of our rambunctious kids, rambunctious kids. I remember she would buy donuts from the local donut shop and treat the students and I always felt loved and cared for by somebody who truly loved what she did. I am so sorry for your loss and thank you for sharing and keeping her memory strong. So that's what from 20 years ago. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, that was from Romina. The student Ryan says she was a sweet woman and she was a treasure. Uh, let's see what else. Talin says, OMG, Miss Daisy. I even had a dream about you last year. I would love her our library visits because she made them so fun and interesting. She was always so sweet and caring. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see. 
One was, um, oh, my memories of her, this is Christy. Oh, my memories of her in the library. She was a wonderful and sweet person. I have pictures of her at my mom's house somewhere. My sister and I would talk about Miss Daisy when we talk about John Marshall all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the students. And then, uh, let's see. Let's see, this is from Junita, the principal at John Marshall. She says, um, sorry for the passing of Daisy. Before turning to Marshall as a principal, I taught Marshall in the early 2000s where Daisy was our librarian. She had a heart of gold and a beautiful smile that brightened the room when she entered. She loved the students and loved reading to them. John Marshall family truly lost a gem. And then she asked for information. Uh, I'll send that to everybody later. Uh, what else is there? So I just got a lot of emails. I'm just trying to go through. Let's see. Um, I work with Daisy in the, in the Glendale Library staff. I worked there for almost 33 years and just retired. I was fortunate to work with Daisy at her reference desk for some of the time. She was one of the most consistently nicest persons I've ever worked with. She was a <coughs> course for children of all ages. She worked at all, at all our public desks with enthusiasm and skill. We always knew that her calm and practical nature would be an asset. One of the last times I saw her was at the ABC restaurant in LA Chinatown where she was dining with her family. She came away with a sense of pride. She was with her family. And I'm so inspired by her granddaughter's video. That was George Nicole. Granddaughter's video tribute to Daisy. Please share my condolences with the family. Um, there's so many of these emails that I've gotten. I just wanted to share a few. Um, today I got to go to the, um, to the, uh, to the grave of Lolte with my mom and my and my brother, Kathy and Patrick and the kids. And um, I got to talk to them for a bit and, you know, just thinking about everything that's going on. Um, just a few thoughts about my grandmother I want to share. Uh, Sorry. Um, so she was 86 when she passed away, but she was still taking the bus before COVID uh, struck. So she was still very strong. And It, when I first knew that she went to the hospital on the 31st, I knew how bad the statistics were. And I cooked the one dish she taught me, which was the lumpia dish for Crystal's family. At that point, I was preparing already because it was so bad here in LA. Ah. Uh, that night in Glendale, when she passed away, 305 people passed away in Glendale alone. It breaks my heart for those nine days that she was there. I wasn't able to visit her. And she was only two exits away. I, I think about her and my, interacting with my kids. And one of the most cherished gifts I, I ever received was knowing my great grandfather at an age where I have a memory of him. Like when I think about my great grandfather, I think 
He taught me how to tie a tie and he taught me how to be a gentleman. And to see that with my kids was truly special every day. Um, a few things that I got to learn about my grandmother while she's been helping me was I once asked her why she was still married to Lola Willie at the time. And she told me very simply and very beautifully was that her vow was for better or for worse. Um, that taught me really about how important what you say matters. Um, she also once told me that she was prejudiced towards a certain group of people and she knew it wasn't good and she, that she was always trying to work on it. Uh, she once also told me that she was pro-gay before she knew what gay was. <clears throat> we, the, one of the last things we watched together was on Disney Plus. It was uh, Dren, uh, what was that thing called, Crystal? Well, it was a, sh um, a documentary about transgender, gender roles and, and uh, gender identity. And at the end of it, she told me, she goes, after watching that, I now know that my uncle was, was transgender. She says that she believes that the relationship between her, her uncle and her mom was so close because he was transgender and she loved him no matter what, when, when he was struggling. And that's when she told me the story of, of them passing so close together. Uh, when I think about compassion, I think that's probably where she got it from, was from her mom, showing compassion to her brother. Uh, she told me about a story one time when she was at the university and she was sitting, she sat next to a black man and started talking to him. And the black man asked, why are you talking to me? You're not supposed to. And she looked at him puzzlingly and said, I just want to talk to new people. There was a, a thing I, I talked to a friend today about, and one time I was cooking and I was following a recipe. And she said to me, um, don't worry about the recipe. Only God knows how it's supposed to taste. And as, as hard as it is now, I think she wasn't talking about cooking. I think she was talking about life. Is that it's not a recipe and you don't know how it's going to taste, only God knows. Um, I was very privileged to, to spend some major miles with my grandmother, my kids, my marriage, a lot of things. Um, one of my fondest memories was, uh, she was always worried about Vinny's hearing. <laughs> the first time Vinny responded to her voice, she was so thrilled. She was truly bothered the fact that the healthcare system didn't take care of his hearing. Um, what else? We were together during election day and we were there to console each other through the stress of it and the joy of it. I'm, I'm really, we would have been together for the inauguration. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I haven't shared at all. It's very hard for me. I know that I'm supposed to be thankful for the time I have. But I don't know what to store. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul.
We love you, Paul. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we understand that it, it's going to be hard for you to share. And it's, it's, it, we're really thankful that you shared that. And we wish we could all be together, but we can't. And I'm so thankful to uh, Bingo for starting this. We started the Zoom to do Divine Mercy Chaplet. And, and thankfully, we were, we were ready um, on the night that she passed away. I only had an hour to prepare the novena. So it's just a blessing that we have uh, family and friends joining us. And um, we thank you for your gift of time because I know, you know, there's so many options you can do. It's a Saturday, it's a, a Sunday morning, and yet you chose to be with us to mourn and to grieve and to celebrate her life. So we thank you for that. Um, I'm going to read um, Jean um, was with us yesterday and now she's with us today. And I'm gonna read her, um, can you fix it, Michael? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read her letter to, to us and I'll start. Hi, Jen, sorry about earlier this evening. My internet connection is unstable. It has been acting lately. I so wanted to share my memories about Ati Desi but this is Ate Desi's way of telling me to share it in writing. My regret is that I never thank her for her kindness, nor did I get to tell her how she impacted my life. At least with this, I get to thank you, Joy and Elod for Ate Desi. I'm one of the many Batang Yagit and Palaboy Laboy who was so fortunate to find Ate Desi and live at 43 Mahusai. Living in the dorm, I had shelter and had food. At 43 Mahusai, I found a home. As was their nature, Ate Desi treated me like one of the family. All of us were treated like family and what a family. It was complete with a mother, a father, sister, brother, even a Lola, a Lolo UP, and plenty of titas and titos. We call them Tita Beam, Tita June, Tita Bullet, Tita Don. We even had cousins. I felt I had more relatives at Mahusai than back home. Ati Desi was a believer in the saying, you practice what you preach. She was not preachy at all. She just practiced. You just need to watch and learn. I'm not sure if anyone has mentioned that Ati Desi had a great sense of style and long, long before recycling was in vogue. She was already an advocate. I recall she was an in-demand godmother. Instead of buying a new gown for each occasion, she would wear the same gown, but change the color of the ribbon on the sleeves to match the motif of the wedding. She always looked elegant in her recycled gown. Material things were not that important to her as were relationships and experiences. I remember all the fun parties and gatherings at Mahusai. She was always hosting small gatherings for people she met in her travels or celebrating some event or another. At 43 Mahusai, I first stayed tasted kare kare and baked mussels, staple food at her parties. Mm -hmm. Ate Desi also had a childlike sense of enthusiasm and was always open to discovering new things. Of all things, we got hooked on the sci-fi TV series. Is this five, G? Five? Five? Remember V? Oh, V. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> v. The TV series V about aliens who look like human beings, except the guy ang, ang kinakainila. 
at 7 p.m., we all would be in our favorite spots in Jen's room to watch V and get disgusted together. She can be enthusiastic with just the simplest things. One time I was at Eagle Rock, she read to us a new children's book with such enthusiasm, <laughs> you would think we were hearing the words of a novel prize author. It was contagious and we did listen like it was from a Nobel Prize author. I also learned from Ati Desi to treat people equally and with kindness. When I come home, where I come home from, the persons who work for you eat in the kitchen after the family is done. In Ate Desi's household, they eat together. Yung pinaglaban ng mga estudyante na equality and justice in the Mahusay household, that was the norm. She was the quintessential quit, 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 na taga UP born and bred. After all, she was the daughter of none other than Lolo UP, a university institution. I think Ate Daisy was one of the fortunate few born with a kindness and happy gene, part of her DNA. But even when times were challenging, she chose to be kind, joyful, and focus on the positive. After Daisy, after Ate Daisy welcomed, embraced, and nurtured so many of us, and because she did, we accomplished what we sought to achieve. Not only that, we found lifelong friendships and learned important life lessons. Ate Desi may no longer be in this world, but she left us a blueprint on how to live a joyful, loving, and inspiring life. As Nicole said in her scrapbook, hers is truly a life worth imitating. To Janet, Elot, Joy, and the rest of her relatives, Thank you for Ate Daisy. I am forever grateful to Ate Daisy and you, her family, and I consider my life blessed because she was part of it. Always, Jim. Thank you for reading that, Jen. <laughs> so many fun memories of our house in Mahusay. Um, Jean uh, is, was um, my mom's um, goddaughter during the, her wedding and it was um mom was we were already there at the wedding i was going to be the the maid of honor and mom was with me they were fixing her hair and then jean was having her hair done too and she she looks at tita my mom and she said i ate daisy ikaw pala yung ninang <laughs> My mom just found out on the spot. <laughs> so, so she said, Ito talaga to si Jean. I'm not even dressed. <laughs> so yeah, her name was on the invitation. She was the godmother and everything. But Jean just told her on the spot, Oh, you're my godmother. Okay. So that was the, <laughs> I remember it. Chaka Jen Shalang yung godmother. Yeah. Oh. Yung from my side. <laughs> so Jean is Nicole's godmother, and Mira, her daughter, is my goddaughter. So that's how close we are. We have we, we have a lot of fond memories. And when Tessa and I we were talking about that today, she said we were so blessed we found uh, your family because you know mga taga siya kami. So many things could have gone wrong, but then we 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 found you guys, and it was really a blessing for us. We had so much fun. Right. <laughs> yeah, we were, we had so much fun, Jean. It was funny because um, um, Jean liked to watch TV. So mom was like, I was telling my family, um, Jean made my mom nervous because she's supposed to be studying for the bar exams. And all she did was watch TV. So <laughs> when, the bar exam, yeah, when the bar exam results came out, Jean passed it and she with one with one take. And when the California bar exam came out too, she also passed it with one take. So oh uh, and Jen, Jen, I remember. Alam mo kung sino nagsusumbong sa akin si Bets, Joy, <laughs> si Bets Arenas niyan. Si sunusumbong niya ko kaya today, sabi niya, 
Ito si Jane, hindi yan nag, nag-aaral. Nag, ano yan, palagi yan nanonood. And then Ate Daisy spoke to me. Says, Jane, I don't mind if you watch TV. You just have to pass. And I said, okay. <laughs> you just need to pass. Uh, yun daw yung sabi niya kay, kay Bets kasi nagreklamo si Bets. Sabi niya, basta nakapasa ka. <laughs> Hindi tayo, wala tayo, good tayo, but you just have to pass. <laughs> so, so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so she's attorney Jean Tinsai. She's from San Francisco. Uh, thank you, Jean. That was beautiful. It brought so many memories of uh, the good times in Mahusa. You were on the spot on everything oh, and how we grew up. Yeah, um, I I distinctly remember that. But when my when we were very little. And my grandmother, Lola Chering, didn't want the, they, she wanted the house helpers to eat outside, outside, not even inside with us. And she told my grandmother, no, they're going to stay and eat here with us. And I was like about maybe seven or eight years old when, when I remember that she said that to her. So yeah, she, she was uh, for equality. Yeah, you know, she was fair. She treated people the same. Yeah. You know, kung maski yung kasama niya sa bahay. So that was, that actually left a lasting impression on me because where we're, where I'm from, hindi naman ganun eh. But sa bahay niya, ati days, ganun pala mag-treat ng tao. Dapat pareho. So that was, that made an impact. And even now, I always remember those lessons. And even ng, I was my, myself, had people. I remember that. And that's what, they, uh, what I did too from her example. Thank you. And Jean, I wanted to add too, I, I found out from Auntie Janet that um, that you were Tita Daisy's, uh, you were the one who was, who had the duty <laughs> of wrapping all the Christmas gifts for all of us <laughs> little kids. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, because I like to wrap presents. So, you know, the assignment. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when we were in Manila, um, I was with my cousin. We, we, Tita Daisy, Army, Eileen, and I actually got to have lunch. And Army said, um, and Army told uh, Tita Daisy, you know, Ninang, what I remember and what I'm so happy when I think of you are the dolls that I got from you when I was a child. And my Lola Chering would say, why are you buying gifts? Why are you buying dolls for them? You should just give them money. And Tita Daisy, no, I, you have to let children be children. And what, 40, 40 years later, you know, and that's what we talk about. That's what my cousins remember about Tita Daisy. It, you know, like they won't remember any money, but they remember the dolls. So Jean, in behalf of my cousins in 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 the in Manila, thank you for wrapping those gifts. So welcome here. <laughs> I did it joyfully for a few days. Jana lala o pa dati pag Sunday. Pag uh, mamalengke ka pag wala si Ate Daisy, magdandala ka ng palabok, bibili ka doon sa Central Market. <laughs> Sometimes, it, but you remember that? You'd buy, the, there's this place that Ate Daisy would go to. Hindi mo na, oh, the mute ka. <laughs> I cannot hear you. It's okay. Okay, sorry. I don't remember that. All I remember is, yeah, when she left for her scholarships and I was old enough to go to the to the market to buy the food. Um, that was the most difficult thing for me because I didn't know how to choose and buy, buy what is fresh and what is not. So yeah, it was funny. Jen, si Jen. Jen, si Ate Lenny. Mm -hmm. Kinto Anja, no? Oh. Welcome her. Hi, Le Ate, Ate Lenny Kinto. Kamusta? Lenny. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm sorry if I, I don't mention your name because I'm doing uh, co-hosting with Bingo too. So I just, I just any bingo. Yeah. but again, thank you. Thank you so much from our family 
to you for being with us at this time of a very difficult time for us, but with, um, with this platform that we are able to express our grief and very much appreciated for all the comforting words that um, you give to our family in all your messages. Yeah, thank you. Sandro, did you I, want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say one last thing um, about what Paul was saying. Um, I, so it, it was about the story about um, Lola Daisy's um, uh, mom and her uncle. Um, so I came out in 2014 to my mom and people over here. Um, but when I didn't, I was scared to um, came, come out even uh, after that to uh, uh, a little Daisy and everybody over, uh, over there, just because um, I didn't want to lose you guys. Um, I really, really, I, I remember being in the car with uh, little Daisy in 2017, and she told me the story about her uncle and her, her mom. And um, uh, she, because then I told her, and um, she, uh, she just expressed so much love and warmth. Um, I was so happy <laughs> that she just so loved me. Um, <laughs> It really, really just, uh, comforted me and um, just meant so much. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted that yeah, story just, and her experiences with that just, um, it may, gave her an example that it isn't a bad thing and um, therefore she could love me. And uh, it just, that just made, my life so much brighter because I think if I didn't have that acceptance, I truly, truly would have been so sad about that loss in that kind of way. And it really just, I don't know, it made my like belief in kindness grow so much stronger. It's just, it really was one of the most like heartfelt things I've ever experienced is that she still loved me. Um, I just wanted to share that story. Thank you, Sandro. Sandro, this is Joy. We already knew even before you came out, because as a very young toddler, you, you wanted to play with dolls. So it was fine. I know, but I know. For me, it was just a kind of... <laughs> It was a little bit different from the other side, I guess. <laughs> no, I, uh, also, Sandra, the other thing is, uh, you know, maybe because you hadn't spent time so much time with grandma, you didn't know how much she loved you and how it wouldn't have even been a question, you know, no matter what. Um, you sh I know it's, you know, scary as a child to, to imagine that. Um, but, you know, it's it was obvious from when you were very, very little that grandma loved you so much and would have always accept you for, for you no matter what. So don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you, Sandro. Uh, yeah, mom's love was unconditional. Uh, yeah, so we would have accepted you in any uh, any way, you know, and know that we're family and it doesn't mean that she's gone that we're not family we are still family you can always count on us and and yeah that's why we shared every every update that uh, tita irene did with us i updated you too so i know um the last email when Lola Daisy passed away, uh, that was the hardest for me to, to write. But I knew that you had to know right away. So I, I did it. And I'm so glad that you're here with us sharing. We love you. Thank you so much. Love you too. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, um, does anyone else want to share? Okay, I think um, we will end tonight. It will be a prayer from uh, uh, Tita Lynn or Tita B or Natalie. Uh, she will end with the prayer tonight. Again, um, thank you for being with us. And uh, tomorrow will be our last day. And um, we will be doing some poems and some letters for her. And we hope you can join us again. And just take care and stay safe. And God bless you all. Tita Lynn. Yeah, yeah. Prayer in time of sorrow and death. Loving Father, we commit to you our loving embrace, to you, to your loving embrace, our sister Daisy. We give thanks for all the good things in her life and for the time of happiness that we have shared. We put our trust in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who rose from death to give us new and eternal life. God of mercy, come close to those of us who mourn. Comfort us in assurance of the love that never dies. Bless us in the happy memories of the past. Compassionate God, Sustain us in this time of sorrow, believing that nothing that has been good and lovely can ever perish. Amen. Amen. Good evening and God bless us all. God bless us all. <laughs> and good day to those in the Philippines. Thank you, Bim. Thank you, Jen. Hi, Thank Sandro. You. Hi, Sandro. We love you. Good luck Thank with you all. Love you. you. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Good evening and good morning. God bless everyone. Bless Thank you. God bless you too, Elsa. Bye. Okay. So, Janet, I will, I will, I will try to get my cousin, Marie Lou, because uh -huh. she was, uh, she, she would, she, she was surprised to learn that your mom died. Oh. So I said, uh, how did you know Tita Daisy? Oh, I'd see her in church. So, but she now lives in Oxnard. So I will, I will, I will send her, her uh, a, link, yes. a note, and I will yeah. send her a link. Yeah, thank okay. you, Possibly. thank you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, bye. 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 Hello, Igo. Bye. Bye. to all the titas and titos. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, big dog. Bingo, I remember you when we used to go to Mahusay for New Year's in the evening of New Year, no, January 1st. Huh. You and your sister, you were little ones. And I know you were, okay. I remember because um, we had fun times together, even if we just talked for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, such cute little girls. Oh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> And and I I actually lived at Mahusai for part of my life until before I went back to school. I think after nice. Lo, after Lolo Timo died, I I I lived at Mahusai. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the neighbors of Janet is my friend, si Pinky Pinky Castello Cupino. Janet. Oh, across she, the street. Yeah. 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 And she remembers you very well, but uh, she's in the farm and she has very poor connection. Usually weekends they go to the farm, so mm -hmm. hopefully she can join us. Um, uh -oh. I hope she can join us tomorrow. And yeah. another, I have I have a second cousin, si Leila Morota. She's Kilala natin siya, Bim, uh -huh. um, anak ni Chuta Morota, de ba? Ay anak, ah, pamangkin. Okay, pamangkin. I so, saw her earlier. She was in. Uh, 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 she remembers. Oh, she's right you know, there. She knows her mom, her daughter. She knows her in the hospital. So I said, she said, oh, oh, I will greet and, ano, and uh, give my condolences. Uh, she's there. I, I saw 